Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1 for this, our driver ratings for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A fantastic race, but it's now time to give each driver a score between 1 and 10. Before we do that though, remember to like and subscribe and a huge shout out to our members, Dakota, the Joyous James, Robin Myers and Cinnamon Strudel. Now I really need to sneeze and the sneeze is not coming through. I've been sat here for a good five minutes waiting for this sneeze to arrive and it just won't. It's being very rude. So if it seems like I'm a bit off, it's because I'm battling a sneeze. But that's not going to stop me from giving these drivers a ratings between uh, 1 and 10. As always, we start with Haas. But unlike always, we start with... Oliver Behrman, here he is everybody, uh, filling in for Kevin Magnussen of course, who is serving his race ban this weekend. Ke uh, Ollie Behrman here had a fantastic weekend, he really did. I'm so glad we got to see him and Hulkenberg as a pairing, because I was really hoping that that was going to be what the Haas lineup was going to be for next year, but it is going to be Behrman and Ocon of all people. So I'm glad that we got to see Behrman go up against Hulkenberg to kind of get that <clears throat> uh, measure of, of those of Behrman against someone like the caliber of a Nico Hulkenberg, who I have a lot of respect for. And Oli Behrman beat him in both qualifying and the race. Now, the race is a bit more dubious, and we'll get on to that, but in qualifying... Flat out, Oli Behrman, he qualified 11th, that was promoted to 10th because of uh, Lewis Hamilton going to the pit lane. A lot of guys in this race had their uh, qualifying positions uh, elevated by either Hamilton or uh, Gasly. So, <clears throat> Oli Behrman starts in the top 10, finishes in the top 10 to bring home one point for the Haas team. A fantastic race here, you know, really, really good job. We saw him going wheel to wheel with uh, Hamilton in the Mercedes, and you know, Hamilton is obviously far more experienced, and the Mercedes a far better car, but Oli wasn't too scared to get his elbows out and properly had a fight with him. Really good stuff. Got a point on his Haas debut. What else can you give him but a 10 out of 10? A fantastic job from Oli Behrman. Across now to his teammates, Nico Hulkenberg. He qualified 12th, would end up in 11th place. The interesting thing here, and I mentioned it in the uh, race review, before the crash of Sainz and Perez, Hulkenberg, I think, was 8th. Then after the crash crash dropped down to 11th and I have no idea I had no idea what happened there and they didn't show any replay and I still haven't seen any footage of it but he said in his interview afterwards that he hit some debris and had some kind of damage or went off at some point and lost those two positions so he was ahead of Ollie Behrman for the entirety of the race I think there was some kind of team orders uh, at one point between the Haas team to say let Nico go through so overall, Hulkenberg had a great race, which was ruined and made completely pointless by something entirely out of his control, which is a huge shame. I'm still going to give him a 9, though, because I thought it was still a fantastic race to even finish 11th. Going across to Zhou Guan Yu, and Zhou is a, a driver I've been very harsh on this year. He hasn't been great, but here, actually very good. Now, qualified uh, 17th, despite actually qualifying... Uh, I think he was 19th and then took an engine penalty but ended up further in front in 17th because of everything else that went on. Um, and then finished the race in 14th, which is one of his highest race finishing positions of the season. And in that car, there isn't really much you can do better than 14th. I mean, he finished 11th in the first race, but since then, uh, I don't think a Sauber has been near that position ever again. So for Joe, I think this is an 8 out of 10, a fantastic race from Joe. And when you're in a car like that, it's always going to be an underrated race because no one's going to really look at someone finishing 14th and going, great job. But he did a great job. Valtteri Bottas now, and uh, not as good from uh, Bottas. He qualified 16th, finished the race in 16th. And I saw before that Bottas actually had the fastest pit stop of the race. How far we have come from the start of the year where the Sauber team were having 30, 40 second long pit stops. They had the fastest pit stop here, but it was still for nothing. Uh, 16th place, I'm going to give Valtteri 
a five and move on from there. Uh, Yuki Sonoda didn't have much better uh, race than Bottas, but realistically there was nothing he could do about it. Got hit by Stroll on the opening lap. Huge side pod damage from there. Uh, despite this, continued on for quite a few laps and had, you know, drove actually pretty well. He kept Lando Norris behind him for a few laps uh, at the start, despite having damage, which was very impressive. Uh, but then eventually would have to retire the car. There was no real question about it, uh, realistically, when you saw the damage that he had. So I don't really know what to give him, really. I feel a five is good, and mainly because I thought those two laps of keeping Lando behind were actually very impressive afterwards when you realise how bad it had got for him. Uh, meanwhile, Daniel Ricciardo. Now, Daniel Ricciardo is in a very strange group of people in this race. It's him, Ocon, and Gasly. And I didn't really see anyone touch on this at all during the race, but none of them pit until lap 49 of, I think it was only a 51-lap race. They all stayed out, I think, on the hard tyre from the start, basically until the end. Then when that virtual safety car came out, they uh, pitted then. I think Ocon may have done that last year as well, because there was that whole thing of he was pitting and there was all the camera crew in the pit lane. They nearly killed them all. Well, they did it again, but this time uh, it was Gasly, Ricardo, and Arcon. Uh, for Ricardo, it meant that he qualified 14th and ended up finishing in 13th place. I mean, realistically, on a strategy like that, I don't know if you're going to get a massive benefit. It's kind of the thing where you go along and hope for a safety car to try to give you a benefit. But yeah, it didn't play out the way he wanted. I mean, 13th still is a very good job. And to go 49 laps on the same set of tyres is impressive. So I'm going to give him a 7. To Franco Colapinto now. Well, I think I said a couple of weeks ago that I think this photo of him is photoshopped. It is. I checked the old Logan Sargent uh, driver profile picture. And it's the exact same picture. They've just swapped the heads round. Which, uh, which is great. Meanwhile, <laughs> Colapinto... Qualified 8th, finished 8th. In his second race of his F1 career, he has secured 4 points, which is 4 times the points that Logan Sargent secured in a year and a half. A fantastic job from Colapinto. I said 2 weeks ago of his debut, I gave him a 9 out of 10, and I said if he just sorts out that qualifying, because he made that little mistake in qualifying that cost him so much, if he sorted that out, it would have been a 10. Here, he sorted it out. He was perfect all the way through the weekend. Secured huge points for the team. 10 out of 10 for Franco Colapinto. Meanwhile, Alexander Albon let down by the team in qualifying, leaving that um, engine fan in the car, which means that he didn't get to have that second lap at the end of Q3, uh, meaning he qualified uh, 10th, but that was promoted up to 9th. And then from there... Just a very good race, was up there, you know, with the guys such as um, Norris and Verstappen and uh, Sainz and Russell, really on older tyres, holding them all back. You know, wasn't the kind of guy going, oh, I'm in a slower car, I'll just let them through. No, he fought for his position really hard, pushed those tyres, made that strategy work, came back and fought through in the end, uh, finishing in seventh um, for Albon. It's another 10. Fantastic job for him. Uh, here's Esteban Ocon. Like I said, he was one of those guys who just didn't pit until the end. He started from the pit lane uh, due to um, engine uh, changes. Would end up finishing in 15th. I mean, realistically, there's not much to shout about in terms of Esteban Ocon. I don't really remember seeing him on the broadcast, if I'm perfectly honest with, with you. So I'm going to give him a 5. Let's go to his teammate, though. Pierre Gasly. Now, Gasly's weekend, I think, can be summed up by the phrase one step forward and two steps back. He had a decent qualifying, which saw him uh, qualify in uh, 13th place. He was then disqualified from qualifying due to a technical uh, infringement. And Alpine came out afterwards and said, yes, that did break the rules. It also made us slower. So Gasly could have gone quicker from here. Then, like I've said multiple times already, just didn't pit for the entire thing. Ended up finishing 12th. And one of the more overlooked moments of this race was his incredible double overtake. I believe it was on 
Collar Pinto and Russell. It was definitely Russell and someone else, but a double overtake into turn one. Russell got past him again pretty much instantly, but he still did it, and it was fantastic looking. You know, um, for that strategy that he pulled off there, and that overtake that he pulled off there, and a good performance in qualifying despite the car being slower than it should, I'm going to give him an 8. Very good uh, race from Pierre Gasly, despite everything. Okay, here's Lance Stroll. Bad weekend for Lance Stroll, and I feel like at this time of year, Lance gets into the really weird mood where, you know, he's had questions of his ability all season and he's just fed up of it. We were, if you remember last year in Qatar, where uh, he went out in Q1, then there was a really moody interview with him and an interviewer and you saw him pushing one of his team members and all that kind of stuff. And I saw another interview with him this week where he was very moody again and this just wasn't good for him. I mean, qualifying in 13th place, I mean, if you look at how he's qualified this year, that's not too far off. I mean, that is actually very good. Um, if you compare it to Alonso, Alonso did far better. But in terms of where you would expect the Aston to be, I mean, 13th isn't too far off. Then in the race itself, just goes for a move that was never really on with Yuki Tsunoda. I mean, you know, a move like that, on lap one, you've got to be pretty confident that you're pulling it off if you're going to go for it, and it really just wasn't there. He got a puncture from there, uh, and then was round about the back of the pack. He's fighting through and fighting through. I think, and then he, I think he was attempt. Obviously, had to go for the two stop from there. Although realistically, looking at uh, Ricardo and uh, Gasly and Ocon, maybe the, the one stop would have been possible after after only stopping on lap one. But then yes, retired the car with like two or three laps to go so it's like what was the point anyway really just a pointless race from stroll all around so i'm going to give him a two out of ten meanwhile fernando alonso actually had a very good race aston i've said many times now in a very very strange place where the car isn't good and probably won't be good for a long time but everyone is kind of just like looking to 2026 now that, you know, Newey is officially confirmed to be part of the team. But despite that, Alonso had a very good weekend. Uh, qualified in 7th place, then would finish the race in 6th, which is his second best finish of the year. The only one better was he finished 5th in the uh, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So actually a very good result for Fernando Alonso, who receives... A 10 out of 10. And wow, it's time to talk about this man. Qualified. P2. Won the race. Some immaculate defensive driving. Personally, I don't think the McLaren was the faster uh, car this weekend. I think Ferrari overall had the better car. McLaren were probably second. And we saw that a lot with uh, you know how Leclerc was able to just stick with him throughout the entire race, but never really make that move. And I think as well, when you look at the move that Piastri did to take the lead, that's a move that is real like 50-50, you know. It wasn't an open and shut thing, but to have the courage to go for that and make it work was next level stuff from Oscar Piastri. Then, like I said, all the defensive driving that he did, I mean, it was... It was incredible. It was easily his best race he's done in Formula 1. He, yeah, he was just beautifully consistent throughout the entire race. And I think, you know, sometimes when people want to kind of throw criticism at Piastri, they say, oh, he doesn't really get tyre management. But here, he got tyre management and then some. I mean, you know, Charles Leclerc, I know he was in the dirty air, but, you know, at the end, his tyres were destroyed, whereas Piastri, I think, could have gone on a little bit more. You know, the pressure he was under from Leclerc at a track like Baku, which is a very high-speed street track where the slightest mistake and it's done for you, as we found out with Sainz and, um, and uh, Perez. Yeah, this was pitch perfect from Oscar Piastri. Incredible stuff, to the point that I'm going to do something now that I've only ever done once before, and that is give Oscar Piastri 11 out of 10. It was a fantastic, fantastic victory, and he deserves the extra points there. Uh, across to Lando Norris now, and the story of his weekend uh, is a mixed one. I think the main thing that people will remember this weekend for is him going out in Q1. 
Now, lots of questions around that. Uh, he's saying that he saw a yellow flag, but he also did run wide at the start of Sector 3. Uh, I saw, I think it was Jacques Villeneuve was questioning it, but I think he questions most things. Who knows what really happened there. Uh, but yeah, starting down in 15th, but I thought a decent recovery uh, drive there. Like I said, I think the McLaren was the second fastest car on the day. Um, he could have possibly gone a bit better if he'd passed Albon. I think Albon held him up for a little bit. But I also think that he was kind of using Albon to give him that toe and give him that DRS to defend from Verstappen at the exact same time. So really playing a game of 4D chess uh, at some point here. And you know what? To come back through uh, starting 15th, to finish high up in the points, uh, finish in fourth place ahead of Verstappen was still very good. Um, overall, I can't give it too high of a score just because of qualifying, but still, I think it deserves an 8 out of 10 for Lando Norris. Here's Carlos Sainz. Um, he qualified third. Uh, he would lose that position to Perez on the start and then kind of disappeared, really. From the start to the end, he kind of just disappeared. And then towards the end of the race, turns up chasing the leading pack. And then we know how that ends. Him and Perez collide into a wall. Uh, personally, I've watched this a few times now. And for me, I think science has to take most of the blame for that incident. People will say, oh, but Perez could have moved over. It's like, yeah, he could have, but he didn't need to. He gave science all the room that science needed. And Sainz pulled over into uh, Sergio Perez and ended both of their races from there. And, uh, you know, threw away a lot of good points. And, you know, Ferrari are in this hunt for the Constructors' title. They're not too far behind the Red Bulls and the McLarens. And throwing points away like that is not the way they're going to get it. So, for Sainz, I'm going to give him a four. A bad race uh, overall for Carlos Sainz. Charles Leclerc, though, had a good one. Uh, fourth pole position in a row in Baku for uh, Charles Leclerc, and fourth race in a row for Baku and Charles Leclerc that he hasn't won, which must be a bit annoying for him, but still a very good race. Uh, I am going to give him a 10, because I thought, despite, even though he didn't win it, I thought he was very good. I mean, the tyres fell away at the end, but I thought, with his tyres falling off the cliff to still have that defensive move that he threw on Checo which pushed him into the path of science was like a masterpiece like next level stuff so I think that was fantastic from Charles Leclerc and he deserves a 10 for this race even though he didn't win let's go to Mercedes now starting with George Russell who you know very much like science really um kind of he lost the position to Verstappen at the start disappeared for a while, then turned up later on the podium. And I think that was a very good job. You know, I don't think the Mercedes was too quick this weekend, but he made it work. And, you know, there's going to be people saying, oh, well, you're only, you're only there because those two people crashed. But it's like, yeah, but, you know, he still got himself into that position that when that happened, he was able to benefit from it. So I think George Russell deserved a 10 as well, not 11. Uh, a 10 out of 10 for George Russell, a great podium for him. And when we look at so how much Hamilton struggled this weekend, Jesus, right? So Lewis Hamilton qualifies in 7th, uh, then ends up starting in the pit lane due to engine changes. And from there, was just nowhere, really, really struggling all throughout the race. I mean, like I said, battling a Haas for a lot of it, battling a Haas with Oli Berman in his second ever F1 race. Uh, just was was really nowhere. We, you know, over the radio we heard how unhappy he was with that car. Uh, ends up finishing ninth, so gets a couple of points there. But yeah, one to forget for Hamilton. I'm going to give him a five across two. Oh, Sergio Perez! My goodness, I felt so. What an emotional roller coaster of a race weekend for Sergio Perez. Qualifies in fourth place, out qualifying Max Verstappen for the first time this year. Has a great start to get past per uh, get past uh, Science, uh, and then kind of just falls into a race of his own. Really, then just kind of lays in wait, and he sees ahead of him the Clear and Piastri battling it out, and he just stays there. I think for a lot of it, he was just around about the second mark off the back of uh, Charles Leclerc, just kind of waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for his moment to come. 
and towards the end, his moment did come, because Leclerc's tyres fully went off, he was all over the back of him, like I said, there was that great defensive move from Leclerc, and then that pushed him into the path of Sainz, which ended up with him uh, crashing into Sainz, well, Sainz crashing into him, in my opinion, and that race ending, but, you know, a podium was written in the stars for Sergio Perez here this weekend, the track where he is the best at, statistically, the goat of Baku, Sergio Perez, but yeah, man, I mean, he should have been second or third, and unfortunately that was taken away from him. And with the year he's had, where it's just gone all so wrong, a result like that could have done so much for him. And I hope that, despite not getting the result, a race like that has helped his confidence, because it was fantastic. I can't give him a 10, because he didn't finish the race, but I think he did absolutely nothing wrong, so I'm giving him a 9. Great stuff from Sergio Perez. Meanwhile, very much like Mercedes, where, you know, one driver did very well, one driver did very badly, and it's not the one you expect. Max Verstappen, my goodness, okay. Well, as a Max fan, this was a painful, painful weekend, because it looked like in practice that Red Bull were back in a position where they felt comfortable, and Max revealed afterwards that they made some setup changes between practice and qualifying, and it had all gone wrong. Uh, qualified sixth, I wasn't too disappointed with that, to be honest, because I thought, okay, well, maybe that's where he is uh, at the minute, uh, in terms of, you know, the Ferraris and the McLarens are so quick that maybe sixth is the best that we can hope for from there. I wasn't too shocked about Sergio out qualifying him either, just because Sergio is so good there. But then the race itself started, and it was just like, okay, you got past Russell, Okay, now he's going to chase down Sainz, and he did for a little bit, then he just fell back and fell back and fell back, and then he was stuck behind Norris forever and ever and ever, and then Russell caught him, and you thought, well, Russell's not going to get past him, but then Russell did get past him, and then, you know, Norris pits, and Norris has about 15, 16 seconds behind Max with 15 laps to go, and you go, oh, well, he's probably not going to catch Max, oh, he has caught Max, but he probably won't pass him, oh, he has passed him, it's just like, oh, man, this was, this was bad. This, this was not a great race for him. I mean, saved in the end by Perez and, and Sainz uh, crashing, which gave him that P5. I mean, he had pitted, so he was probably going to go for the fastest lap, which didn't happen in the end. But overall, one to forget for Max. I'm giving him a 5 out of 10. This was probably, I think this is his worst race in a long time. You have to go back to like... Oh, 2018, 2019, maybe even earlier than that to see a race as bad as this for Max Verstappen. It really was not working whatsoever. The positives, as a Max Verstappen fan from this race, is it seems like the Red Bull is better than it was when it's got the right setup on it. In practice, it looked good. In the hands of Sergio Perez, it you know was in contention to win this race at points. So I think the Red Bull is better, but they got it wrong on the setup, and Max just couldn't do anything with it. Uh, upgrades are coming in Austria, not Austria, that was ages ago, Austin. Uh, so hopefully that'll help him there. It's not like our next race is at Max's bogey track. Oh wait, yes it is. So it might be another painful weekend for Max Verstappen fans uh, next about in Singapore. But we'll be here to talk about all of it on the channel, so make sure you subscribe for that. Uh, I will see you then. I desperately need to sneeze. I've been really uncomfortable all this video because I need to sneeze so badly. The sneeze has not arrived. It's been 24 minutes. Oh my goodness. Join us on Friday for the preview for the Singapore Grand Prix. Hopefully I have sneezed between now and then. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Goodbye.